<laughs> the path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the iniquities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who, in the name of charity and goodwill, shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness. For he is truly his brother's keeper and finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Ladies and gentlemen, the Church of Laszlo has begun. Hey, yo. Yo. All right. Uh, you good? I'm good. Hey, thank you very much, by the yeah, way, for yeah, the yeah. cold ones. I brought you a yeah, six-pack of beer. I bought you a, a Truly. I didn't know the flavor you wanted. <laughs> I know. I stood yeah. in front of that. Wait. Like when I was married and my wife used to send me to the grocery store. You just she like a list, and it's not fully explainable. Oh, he really did. He's got one in his hand. Yeah, it's they not. Big boy Truly's? It's yeah. like. It's the like big girls oats or, tall or something. Tall girls. And you stand at the you stand in front of it and you're like, oh boy. And this isn't gonna you be know right. Which one he likes. You said it the other day. Black but I didn't Karant. remember what I remembered it had <laughs> black Quran. Isn't that what he said? Black Quran. Black, <laughs> black I thought Karant. it had a purple label on it, but then I went, I was like, oh maybe he likes pineapple, but pineapple seems risky. But not for him. Re- well, Please? no, there was one that he didn't like, though, right? There's one he was trying to avoid, which was... Uh, m- grapefruit. Grapefruit, okay. Okay. So hopefully, did and you end up with grapefruit? I'm a white claw girl, but it's really good. <laughs> okay. okay. You think you could tell the difference in a blind taste test? Oh, yeah. Wait a second. I know for a fact I've seen you drink those Bud Light seltzers. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll drink them, sure. sure okay. Like you bought them. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, okay. they have they have the tall, tall girls. <laughs> <laughs> white Claw's got the kind like, of medium I know. Girls. I've seen well, you buy those when you had options to buy White Claws and Truly. So, okay. So, you, well, you know, you're your Well, I got you the Wild Claw. Berry. The I wild thought, berries. what sounds like he would he likes yeah. a wild, big Wild Berry? I, I do. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, right, everybody likes Wild Berry. You That's what I thought. You can't go wrong with that, right? No, it's got every flavor What'd in you it. get yourself over there? Is that a I Mick got myself Ultra? a Mick Ultra. Like a golf flavor. Yeah. 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 And trying I'll, to lose a couple pounds, you sure, know? Sure. sure. The best way to do that Not is about to go so beers. far as drink a zero carb <laughs> truly, but right. a Mick Ultra. You know what? I'll, I'll go ahead and sustain the 2.6 carbs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not so far as to quit drinking either, obviously. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> or exercise. It's so hot, though. Hopefully we'll oh, lose that weight was just thing. from sweating. It is so goddamn <laughs> Yesterday, hot. Yesterday, we probably, we probably did, honest to God lose like I, we need scientific scales but we lost weight yesterday that was the hottest it's ever been and i know studio. we're complaining and we do it every time but as soon as it gets hot here high above you know broadcasting high above the church of laszlo building and it, it it's unbelievable to me that they can't fix us and i really think that if we just had our bosses say look we're not even gonna say anything to you you just have to come in and sit in here for four hours yeah, i like that idea just sit here for four hours and see how long it get, how long it takes it to get fixed right because i don't think they'd walk out of here saying that's eh, fine no because i left yesterday and i there were other people who had fans running and stuff and they were hot and i went to feel you know okay they're, they're hot and i was like ha i don't know what it is and right. by the way it wasn't comfortable where they were either right but we seem to be in the epicenter of the, the hottest part you shouldn't be poor drenching sweat from sitting on your no. ass mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah but you know what are we gonna but do what are we we're complaining? We're gonna well, i hours. was thinking about how hot it was gonna be yeah when uh, I was driving in, and there was a guy doing road work, and exactly. there was one guy had like a, I don't know, like a giant saw that he was sawing through cement with, mm-hmm. and the other guy was spraying water on it, I think, or yeah. to keep it cold, maybe. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus, <laughs> yeah, that looks Working not only outside. hot, but that guy's just been bent over. The whole time I'm with, I mean, he just got to go home and his back has got to be shot. Well, and you fall I asleep. can't imagine. I mean, I, I worked for my mom's company. But then I also looked at him and said, you're going to in good shape. And I looked down and I was like, well, yeah, if, do something about those belly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. If you're outside, which I did briefly, I mean, I made it about three months. I'd made it one summer and it changed me forever because oh, yeah. you got to get out there at like five in the morning. Yeah. The earliest you can get out there without someone complaining about noise. And then, you know, you got to work straight through. Because if you take I a hung lunch. drywall and did paint and painted house. I painted a church one time where I had to go up. The guy was like, put the scaffolding on. Yeah. And then put the harness on you and I had to paint the top of it. Yeah. I mean, I was in good shape by the time I was done with those summer jobs. I would drink, you know, you bring out those big coolers of water and you could drink six of those things a day. You never peed once. And then you just right. go home and you'd sit down on the recliner or the couch or whatever and you're asleep. And carpenters are up. one thing, but painters, man. 
Yeah. If you're, you're a bunch of alcoholics. <laughs> yeah. That's it, right? It's I like started just paint and drink. And carpenters, sometimes they go home to their kids and wives and stuff, but yeah. painters, uh-uh. They don't have kids and wives, and they drink. <laughs> they don't. They don't. they don't have them anymore. A lot of divorced guys oh, paint churches. They lost them. They lost, lost them because they work hard and drink hard. That's when I started I started a very bad drinking uh, habit at that point in time. Because Especially on Friday, when you work like that all week, Ugh. you do get the weekends off most of the time. So Friday afternoon, you're like, I have to make the most of this. This is the longest amount of time I have between, you know, Leaving work and going to work, so it, I felt like I had to start, you know, buying uh, equipment to make beer bombs. Plus, I also have to kill the pain of what yes. a horrible job. It's ninety thousand yes. degrees relax. outside, and I'm climbing on top of a church. Yeah, you have to find a way to escape and to relax. Right, and then of course, come Monday morning, you're just toast. Here I am, and that's it at yeah. the Home Depot with the rest of you, getting a hot dog for breakfast and yep. stirring paint. And this may surprise you. I wasn't even skilled labor. They're literally handing me rags of it was xylene and stuff, and saying, "Go yeah, clean this stuff." Guys, they don't like, need me. You know, after I Hammer hung a drywall, you swipe. You, you were the guy who came by and exactly. swept off. Of- Hammer nails, more nails into the floor so it doesn't squeak. Just dumb stuff. It's like amazing that. It's to me how degrees. good I was at it. And now, if you were to ask me, like, "Hey, man, can you just hang drywall in my basement?" I'd be like, "I do not know how to do that." I don't know how to do anything, but luckily I, I never understand did, the concept. So. I know to tape and mud, but if you were to ask me, it would look so horrible. I yeah. wouldn't. I never really as soon as do you anything. stop doing like a skilled thing, your brain just purges it. I can't believe. I don't know how long it would take me to go back and do Even it. Even if you get good it. grades, why don't they make sure that you know at least one skill before you leave public school? Then they're not saying that this is what you have to do for the rest of your life, or that they think this is all you're going to do, but teach you one thing. You get to pick. What do you want to learn how to do? You want to learn how to hang drywall? Do you want to, if you think you're really good and dedicated, do you think you want to learn how to weld? You know what I mean? What is right. it? They could do other do? stuff, too. Like, it's not only yeah. that stuff. Like, of all those skills, like, they could say, do you want to learn how to, how about you get your personal trainer? Right. Yes. Right. You know, Anything. do that. Like, there's a million different things. How about Anything. you learn how to be, you know, an artist and sell your art? Yes. Right? Like, you could do all that yes. stuff without going to college. But I don't know how to do anything. Right. And I'm serious. Like, I don't have, at least at some point, you knew how to hang drywall. I never learned how to do yeah, anything. I could not do that now. I, I washed cars for a long time. That's well, about it. You, know? you could manage a car wash. Yeah. yeah Someone I always needs that. I don't know how to fix the car wash when it breaks or give you the coins. That you know, was that uh, the That's job. <clears throat> there was a, uh, a Jack's car wash. Uh, and it was like one of those full service car washes. Yeah. And that was the job that I decided not to take. To try radio. Oh, that's when you passed Yeah, on? they were like, it was, they're like 45K, you know, wow. you work seven days a week and you manage this. And I was like, boy. That's tempting. That sounds good, yeah, man. Like, what do I got to do? Come in here? And then I'm like, do I got to wash the cars or anything? They're like, no, just, you know, make sure. And I'm like, people show Whoa. up. Whew, that is tempting. Right. I could see myself getting stuck in that mm-hmm. forever. It's kind of my backup plan. Right. Well, everyone has to have that. Mine's hoping that some dealership will hire me as a porter to get those cars ready for delivery. Right. If they ever start, you know, making cars again to deliver. Right. And then hopefully there was a, a, a girl I dated. Her dad owned bars on, um, he owned one on Illinois State University campus. And then he ended up selling it and buying car washes, but the, just the ones you put the yeah. quarters in. Yeah. And he bought them all around Chicago, and then he hired one guy in his 50s and paid him like an absorbent amount of money, and all that did, guy did was drive around and collect all the quarters yeah. and bring them to him. I've heard that's I'm an like, awesome that's investment. That's a good job, too, but the guy... Right. The guy, like, I just Pick drive around and take the quarters and drop them off at the bank for you? That's easy. There must be enough money in it that he can afford to do that, obviously. And I've heard that if you have enough money and you can open enough of those car washes, it's awesome. That and storage. With storage, they say you don't have to mm. do anything. I guess you probably got to deal with people not paying you know, right. month to month. But those are the two things. Those are two things I'll never have money to open. I'm no. not going to have money to buy land and open a automated wrong. car Something wash. Coming in. What's wrong? You need a shot of a... Uh, what are you doing? Okay. Oh, he needs to be able to see the computer. Ah, uh, well, hey, it's uh, it's Tuesday. I know we mentioned this mm-hmm. earlier, but uh, it's it's just us I'd love today. to hear Julie's if you can text us. Tell us what you do for a living. Yeah, what's your Tell skill? Tell us your name, where you live, and what's your skill. What do you do for a living? I'd love to hear it. The Church, the Church of Laszlo. All right, what are we doing? Uh, well, yeah, text us what you do, because we're very yeah, interested in we're that. We're curious. Uh, not only because, you know, we've mentioned uh, we don't really have skills, but also because... Uh, your kids are at an age now where they start talking about, like, what do they maybe want yeah, to do? Yeah, my Obviously oldest was like, maybe I'd like to go to culinary school. I'm like, that'd be great, Oh, there man. you go. Right. Yeah. That's a perfect example. There Something you that you could get started soon, because he's in high school now, he's right? Going about, now. about to be. Yeah. Uh, so text us, 913-576-7965. Yep, 913-576-7965. Right? 
And uh, real quick, I saw this. You remember we used to talk to – we had a, a friend of the program for many, many years named Soren Bowie. He worked mm-hmm. for Kraft. Is he going to be on? And, well, no, he is eventually. Uh, I actually, I think Snow Cone's been talking to him. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, he worked for Kraft, and then he went and got a job as a writer in American Hollywood. American Dad. And he worked for American Dad, which last I talked to him, he was still doing. And when he left Kraft, I kind of stopped uh, going to Kraft. But what? I saw today people sharing this uh, list, and I thought, well, you know what? This is from Kraft. And I, I thought – Okay, I didn't know a lot of these. Even though I consider myself a pretty big music fan, most of these I didn't know. But I'll bet Lazo knows a lot of these. It's right, songs it. songs that are secretly about famous people. Okay. So, you know, the story behind the song. So, Aerosmith's Dude Looks Like a Lady. Oh, I read this somewhere. When I saw ah. it, I remembered, and I was like, I completely forgot. Do you know Snow Cone? I did read this. Dude I Looks don't. Like a Lady? Okay. When I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember hearing that, but I didn't know if it was actually true. That was something I heard oh, at some man. point. Oh, man, when you say it, I'm going to know it. I know I've read it. They say it's about Vince Neil from Motley Crue. Yes, 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 yes. The song came to Steven Tyler after he saw the back of Neil's head and it took him for a woman. Uh, apparently, Vince Neil was cool with it. All right. This is, like, maybe the only one that I, I knew, which is Nirvana's Heart-Shaped Box. That's about Courtney's... Uh, yeah, I would have yep. guessed that, but yep. I wasn't positive. Oh, was? yep. Yeah, I never know, knew if that was true or not, but they, they cite here in a Twitter exchange with Lana Del Rey, Courtney revealed that her late husband's song was specifically about not just herself, but her... Yeah. I could have swore like she gave him a heart-shaped box like as a gift or something. But That's well, one of those, did. like, you, you that know... That makes way more sense. It, yeah, and they're citing Twitter, too. It was her who said it, but eh, he's not here to, right. to answer for sure. But I definitely heard that one before. Green Day Holiday. Do you know this? No. I Me mean, neither. Apparently that is, which I knew this whole album sort of was a middle finger to George Bush, but they say this song was a middle finger to George Bush. The entire American Idiot well, album commented right? on the United States, but this song specifically is about the 43rd president. How do we know? During a concert, Billy Joe Armstrong introduced the song as his big F you to George W. Bush. Okay. That's a little bit of a stretch, though. It's, you know, compared it's to like Aerosmith, it's like a lady. Right. That whole album was... Right. Uh, upset with, with him, so that's fine. Jeez. Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl. This one I think I've heard before. Again, I had no idea if it was true, but you guys know this one? No. It's like one of your favorite people in the world. Uh, inspired by Scarlett Johansson, according to this. Perry opened up in a magazine, oh, really? opened up a magazine, saw a picture of uh, Scarlett, and said to her boyfriend, if Scarlett Johansson walked into the room and wanted to make out with me, I would make out with her. Thus, the song was born. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, okay, this song I don't know, so I'm going to skip this. Oh, here you go. It ain't over till it's over. Lenny Kravitz. Uh, what, did he write that about uh, yeah. Lisa Bonet? Yeah, I yeah. did not know that. I guess I'm not a huge Lenny Kravitz fan, but yeah, uh, apparently the two had recently broken up yeah. when Lenny first started writing that song. I thought that that time period was in they were still together, but I guess uh, apparently they just I mean, they were married. I mean, you could guess that. They were married and together, and it ain't over till it's over is, I mean, that's a... Yeah. It's not shroud in uh, in your window. Not too many metaphors there. He's pretty direct. Uh, This one I maybe could have guessed, even though I don't really know the song. Mariah Carey, Obsessed. If you told me it was about a celebrity, I I think I would have guessed that it was about Eminem. I know that there was a lot back and Mm. forth with her and Eminem. Uh, they said that she had this uh, feud with Eminem, which started when he claimed that the two had dated. She denied yeah. it. He persisted, blah, blah, blah. Which, by the, the way, didn't? of course, I was going to yeah. ask you, don't you? I don't think he would make that up. Do you? Ah. It seems like a weird thing. And I mean, he really he doubled down on it mm-hmm. and tripled down on it. I assume that it, even if they didn't date, they at least mm-hmm. hooked up a couple oh, times. Yeah. Right. I mean, they, they, yeah. they hung out. They hooked up a couple times. Uh, Gwen Stefani, holla back girl. This one had no idea. Huh. Never would have thought about it, I guess. But any any guesses? No. It says that it's about Courtney Love. Gwen Stefani heard Courtney Love criticize her as a cheerleader and got fired up. She wrote this song in response, stating that she doesn't typically get involved with S-talking, even though the S-talking took her to a platinum record. I've never heard that in my life. Me neither. Never thought Holla Bat Girl and Courtney Love at the same time. Had no idea. Uh, Outcast Miss Jackson. This one you know, Snow Cone. Come on. Uh, I know you know this one. We've talked about this one at South By. I don't. Oh, uh, Erica Badu. Yes, Erica okay. Badu. Andre yeah. uh, Data Badu in the 90s. And there was one more on here that I thought you might know. Because these other ones like uh, Harry Styles. And I stuff, didn't know I that he know. dated her. Andre? I didn't know until yeah. I read yeah, like the origin of that kid song. Or kids together. I thought uh, that was common. Honestly, I didn't know about their relationship until... Didn't Common date her forever? Uh, and that well, song about know, abortion was about her. I don't know much about Common, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, I don't think I knew that him and Erica Badu dated until, you know, 
probably pop up video or one of those trivia things when they said that Miss Jackson was about Erica Badu. Uh, and then finally, Carol King. Yeah, you're... you got a friend. Yeah. You, you knew this one, right? Um, you've yeah. got a friend. It's, oh, Carol uh... King's. Yeah, you've got a friend. Damn it, I know it. Who is it? I thought for sure Snowcone would know this one. This is like his favorite album. Joni Mitchell. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. I get Joni Mitchell, Carol King confused. It's my mom's favorite album. Uh, Carol King, your favorite album is Joni Mitchell. It's about uh, uh, James Taylor. That's right. Yep. That's right. So there you go. A little, little trivia for you. You used mm, some of those. The other one's the pop songs. I had no idea. The one that I definitely would have never guessed is the Hollow Back Girl. I, uh, there's a story that, <laughs> and who knows if it's true, um, I don't know if I heard it directly from the person or somebody else, but they had um, Carol King, right? Mm -hmm. Her autobiography, and they went to um, something to see James Taylor, right? Okay. And they brought the book for him to sign. And when he opened it, she had signed it, and he skipped to the chapter where she writes about him and wrote, Dodged a Bullet. Oh, wow. James Taylor. Really? Yeah. Oh, I skipped the one that That's I was most. Cool. What about that, huh? That's, That's a good cool. one. And mm-hmm. I skipped over this one because it was the one that I was actually most fascinated by. And I almost forgot completely. You too. You like you too a lot. Stuck in a stuck in a moment, and you mm. can't get out of. Stuck in a moment. Sorry, you can't get out of. You know that song? Yeah, of course. That's a good yeah. song. Did you know that it's about a, a celebrity? No. Stuck in a moment, you can't get out of. Was you two's farewell to Michael Hutchins? Oh, I had well, no idea sense. the somber song is performed as a fictional conversation about suicide between Bono and the NXS co-founder uh, who hung himself in 1997. Wow. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea. I have to listen to it again. I know. Me too. The Church of Lasbo. Yo. Yo. Hey, my man Nick Wright from FS1. How are you? You know, today's been an odd day. <laughs> it's just an odd day in a lot of different ways. I, You know, my... My company hires, you know, one of my idols, the greatest football player ever, <laughs> someone who I've for years been nothing but supportive of, and it's just so exciting for me. Uh, if people didn't hear the news, uh, Fox, you know, Troy Aikman used to be our number one football guy, but he left to go to ESPN. And people were wondering, what is Fox going to do? You know, we have two of the next three Super Bowls. The Fox Sunday football package is the best package there is. And um, it was announced today for what has been a reported um, 10 years, 300 plus million dollars that Tom Brady, when he retires, is going to take over. And so that's really cool and great. And I don't <laughs> so know. So amazing. You have been so rude to that guy. And now no. you are going to have to no. go to some no. big shindig where they bring him in and talk about how awesome he is. And you, I don't think he would have taken, I think part of the reason why he took the job, I'm being honest, when I read that, I was like, I thought he would go more in the Kobe route. I thought maybe he'd make more documentaries. The Man in the Arena was such a good documentary, and he has all of the production companies and everything, but I just feel when your boss called him, he was like, yeah, I'm going to make Nick suck it. No, that didn't sound like him. He's such a good guy and, like, just so known to be gracious and kind. Um, but you've never been mean to Troy Aikman, right? So, you know, oh, maybe, Troy Aikman's gone. Well, maybe. I know maybe yeah. he could help you out, you know, down the road. Who knows? Um, I just, I, you know, I would like to, it, I would like to be able to say, wow. Listen, I have I have had some a few Tom Brady criticisms, right? A couple here or there. Um, I'd like to say, but he doesn't know about them. Like, well, except for that thing you did on Facebook, he had your voice on it. And then when I watched the man in the arena, which you didn't watch, you were actually in it towards like the. I think he said all of these people who don't have any talent talking about people who have talent, and then it was a an actual picture of your face. Yeah, so that's one of my concerns here. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
it's truly oh. amazing. When you texted, as soon as you texted, I, I I saw your text, and then I opened up the news, and it was one of the very first things I saw. Brady yeah. signs a steal, and I was like, man, uh, the luck. Now, like you said, you got to hope that he continues to play for another 20 years right. in the NFL. I mean, well, that's, that's your hope. The other thing is, I really, really do need him to keep playing <laughs> because – because I I would like listen, I am uh, successful. I people like my show. Uh, show's doing well. How and La- Lavo's very very kind to me and says I'm America's favorite sports broadcaster. But I'm not, and I am not yet. Maybe I should be, and maybe one day I will be. But in order for that day to come, I need to stay on the air. And so I need, I need Tom to keep playing until I actually do become America's most popular sportscaster. Just so. so Wait, but let me gone. stop you there. Let me stop you there real quick, because I don't want you to downplay this. I believe Nick Wright from First Things First on FS1 in the morning is. I, look, maybe not America's favorite because people do hate you, but I think you're the most popular. There's no doubt in my mind. Most talked about, most popular. Yeah. Well, that's kind of you. That that does though. That that once again, as far as you said, people hate me. Slim, will you go to Kevin Durant's Twitter page real quick? <laughs> well, yeah, I saw some of this earlier. Man, I hate. I don't want to see people talk bad about you. So so listen. So I I did something I think really cool for the TV show. So we had been de- we've been debating for months, like an ongoing, off and on again debate about what, who is and who isn't an NBA superstar. Okay, and I think the term is thrown around far too loosely. And I said, kind of off the cuff, one day, it's like a nightclub, one in, one out, with a twelve person max capacity. Like, you guys, you can't be calling, you know, Trey Young a superstar. He's a star. He's not a superstar. Right. And so we we started, you know, kind of talking about this thing called Club Superstar. And so I, out of my own pocket, commissioned an artist to create a painting that was the visual representation of Club Superstar. And we debuted it on the show today. And Kevin Durant obviously is in there. Uh, Kyrie Irving, his teammate, is not. Now, Kyrie and I have had our own things where he calls me a puppet and mad at me and all these things. So someone tweeted, this a random person tweeted to Kyrie, uh, because in the image of this, KD is laying on a couch in the club on his phone. Um, someone tweeted to KD, like, yo, I know you don't like Nick Ray, who admit it was funny. Uh, when he said you were in the club texting Kyrie about how lame the club was. <laughs> and Katie quote tweeted it was like, didn't see the segment, but I'm sure it was lame. I'm sure it was trash. <laughs> Nikki's job. I'm sure it was trash. Yeah, I said, I'm sure it was a trash segment. You could do <laughs> sure Nikki's job. Trash. And then tweeted, but, and then someone's like, hey, don't be mean to Nick, right? And he's like, no, dude makes millions. I can say whatever I want about him. That's how it works, right? And I responded to him on that one. I'm like, that's actually exactly how it works, KD. We're on the same page here. Like, well, you're allowed to trash my work. I'm allowed to trash yours. And then he sent me a handshake thing uh, and said, okay, Nicholas. And so I've got KD coming at me. I, there's just a lot of things going on. That was just was a weird just- thing. You know, this is a weird thing. Um. When I read all those tweets, I thought they were funny. And I, but the Nicholas thing, is that like you're a child to him? Like, why the Nicholas thing? Like, why is that the put down? Okay, Nicholas, like, because you're not younger I than think, him. You're not no, a child think, to him. I actually think it's because in my previous tweet, I addressed him as Kevin. And I don't think anyone addresses him as Kevin. What do they address him as? KD? Uh, K. K. Okay, got it. Hey. So he, he went formal when you went formal. I, that as a, I guess maybe not a huge basketball fan. I'm like, his name's Kevin. Why wouldn't I call him Kevin? Okay. Well, yeah, the media calls him KD, 
I think his friends call him K. Okay, got and it. Whatever. So that makes sense. Like so, okay. So he called you Nikki, right. and then he called you Nicholas. Right. Yeah, exactly. And he also the other day called me a peasant and called himself a god. He and I have a tortured relationship. I think actually he likes me and watches me every morning. I do believe that. And I think you like him and watch every game he's in. Well, I watch every game he's in. I, you know, I, 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 I think he's a, he's a, he's an interesting fella. Um, but. You know, two people I really do like? Who? Slim Fast and Laszlo. Oh, Nick Wright. Like, I bet you guys one. something. Hey, so we got um, the gift here. so we're And the... I, I messed up his day even more because I thought I was supposed to save this for Laszlo to open on the air. So I already peeked inside. I ruined the whole thing. And I texted Nick and said, I'll wait for Laszlo. You know, I'm no, going to make sure he's on the it. phone. Right. But I saw what it was. And now you're telling me I wasn't supposed to see it I either. I told oh. you over and over to not open yes, it. Yes. Sorry. Don't sorry. Open sorry. It. sorry. Yeah. sorry. No, so, listen. What? Listen. Yeah. Here's the deal. So I'm going to the, the, the there is there are, there are some there is some podcast equipment in right. there that is a hundred percent for Laszlo and my faux godson Euro. Right, okay? right. you told That's me that. It. There are two other items in there, and it is not a, 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 a they are specifically chosen for each of you. There is an item in there, Slim, that I believe will match your. Uh, chain perfectly. That is for you. That is what, uh, you know, in the streets of New York City, we call a high quality knockoff. High quality knockoff. <laughs> and then. It's a Rolex Laszlo. Daytona. Look at that. And then. No, no the Rolex is slim fast. Right. The Breitling. I, uh, I'm just now oh. using Razzle, the Breitling right now. The Breitling is the exact watch I wear on television. Oh, it is? I didn't... Oh, man. Except this one's a knockoff, right? Well, according to who? Yours is... Yours is... Slim Fast is what we call a tier two knockoff, uh, which is you still pay a few hundred bucks for it. It works, but it might break, you know, within six months. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is the exact watch I wear on TV, which is what you call a tier one knockoff. That's very nice. It has... Even the inside is inscripted. It should work for years. It they claim, falls. Lazo, a tier one, like you could take it to most, uh, you know, experts, and they might not even know the difference. Well, the experts would know. I said most. I'm exaggerating a bit. would not, and it is the watch I wear on TV. I don't wear a wear real Breitling on TV. I wear that exact watch on TV, and I have them both sized according to what I think your wrist would feel. One of the, one of the issues with, the, however... Um, the knockoff rather than the real is the bands are a little stiff until you wear them a bit. Okay. Um, but Slim, that's so awesome, Nick. That's Thank you so very awesome, much. It's man. very, Thank very, you. very, very cool. That Rolex is going to look amazing on the weekends. Once you're, I don't, you know, I'm behind on the podcast. I assume your car has been unrepossessed. Yeah, yeah, when you're yeah. Driving, I should have just, if I'd had know. this and gone to the tow lot and they, you know, I could have just. It's amazing. Straight, it is and very, very cool. Lazlo, I hope it fits. If not, they, they will. I have. I, I can't imagine either is too small for you guys because I had links taken out. Um, if it is, I can send you the links. If it's not, uh, if it's too big, you guys can obviously have links removed. But I don't feel this really truly takes care of my debt. Uh, however, it, it's a step in that direction, and so there we are. So that's well, Nick, very cool. Thing. Long time ago, Nick promised to buy me a watch. And, uh, Nick, this takes care of our debt. We're good. I love it. Well, well, there you go. Do you, will you wear it? Yeah, I'll wear it. I just put it on. Okay, good. That's a good looking watch, isn't it? The, it's perfect. The They're very cool. Like, yeah, it's perfect. Is the, is, is the one you wanted? If I was looking at all the watches in the world, this would be the one I would pick. I'm not even kidding. Same color. Uh, I, I think they call like that precious that. metal. Yeah, I love and it. And I love it because I can wear it. People go, oh, nice watch. I'd be like, yeah, Nick Wright bought it for me. It's the same one he wears on TV. There you go. And that's totally And be true. true. Yep. If you, guys, um, if you guys are able to bleep it, if you want to, the parts where I say they're knockoffs, I just don't want to lie to my No, friends. because <laughs> what's worth yeah, more? Go, okay, crazy. you could pay $30,000 for this Rolex, right? Or you could get one from Nick Wright. Which one do you think is worth more? The there's only Nick one Wright. from Nick Wright. Well, I'd like to have one from Kevin Durant, but this well, is nice. Well, that's true. Yeah, but there's only one from Nick Wright, and I think that's much uh, more valuable. Yeah. 
Or one from Tom Brady when I'm actually, and I might have to start selling them at some point. Time, like, for my new gig. Um, all right, I love you guys. Love you, Nick. Love you, Nick. Later. Thank you very much. See ya. The Church of Laszlo. It's time to doom scroll with Slim Fast. What you don't know could kill you. Murder hornets. Corpies infected monkeys. This is Headlines on The Church of Laszlo. Yo, let's do them scroll and make it quick. I'm hotter than a son yeah, of a yeah, bitch, yeah. man. Me too. Trust me, I will. So the fugitive uh, chase, the two whites that I'm were not hot, a son of a bitch is, but I'm hot. <laughs> that were not related, uh, the, the the prison guard and the, oh, yeah, uh, and the murderer. The uh, the chase ended yesterday afternoon, last night, I guess, or late afternoon yesterday. Uh, they knew that they they'd seen one of their getaway cars and they saw that it had been parked somewhere. So they knew that she had bought a pickup truck. Well, someone spotted the pickup truck at a car wash. When they went to the car wash, they saw them leaving in what they thought was a Cadillac. By the way, Lazo, a Cadillac. Why are you washing, why are you a Cadillac washing a car? I, well, they, they they ditched it there. I think. I think they they parked it in a bay. From what it looks like, they took the pickup truck. Ditched it in the in a bay at the parking uh, or the car wash, and then got because they were switching cars. Like they I know, but why in the bay them. is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. Eventually, someone's going to come and be like, "I need to get in this bay." It's like yeah. one of the places you would not want to ditch a car where someone is going True. to have to get into. Yeah, and they might have actually been. You can pitch it, it in too. a parking know. lot anywhere, and people are just going to drive around it. Yeah, any place that's open 24 hours, and it would take a while for people to find it. Yeah, just leave but it you pitch it in a bay. Eventually, the workers will be like, hey, that car has been here for like two hours. Like, the timing that you could leave it there is so small. Yeah, they left the, so they left the cop car, like a parking or something. I don't remember. Then they left the, the escape. I don't remember, or not the escape, the edge somewhere else. But people were, this story was so big that people were aware. The guy I saw being interviewed who, uh, I think he worked at the car wash, saw the truck. And he's like, I thought that might be them fugitives that were wanted from Alabama. So the police uh, were able to figure out that they were in this Cadillac DTS they go to this uh, hotel, or motel, rather, where they believe they were. They waited for them to leave. They leave. There's a pursuit. The police run them off the road. Uh, the corrections officer ends up shooting herself and uh, dying from her injuries. Now, the weird thing about all, I mean, it's all weird, but no one heard a gunshot, which is kind of weird. There's all these police there. They didn't hear a gunshot, even though they were expecting a possible shootout with this guy. But when they got up to the car, Casey White, uh, the the fugitive guy, he was saying, please help my wife. He started referring to her as his wife. He said she's been shot and I didn't do it. The Marshall Task Force officers intercepted them, actually collided with them to try to end the pursuit. While the Marshals say they didn't hear any gunshots, it soon became clear Vicky had fired a single bullet into her head. We could hear her on the line saying she had her finger on the trigger. The decorated corrections officer later dying of her injuries. The U.S. Marshal Service also telling NBC News Casey got out of the car, surrendered, and said, quote, please help my wife. She just shot herself in the head, and I didn't do it. And I have now said, I was just checking the updates, and Casey said that he was totally planning on a shootout with the police. Okay. That was his plan. He thought there was going to be a shootout. I guess he, you know, we'll find out, but it seems like he didn't know that she had any intentions of turning the gun on herself. Sounds like he thought, well, we'll have a good old-fashioned shootout, just like in the movies, but she ended up shooting herself. Yeah, so, well, I'm not going. going to, she's she, been a prison guard. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going back no, to prison. No, no, And she was about to retire. This whole story. I know. And him calling her his wife, they said there's no indication that they were ever married or anything, and obviously that's the first time they're hearing that him refer to her as his wife. But they didn't even know that they were together until they had left and started looking back at some of the old security footage. So, anyway, that chase is over. And U.S. Marshals, I don't really know... What is U.S. Marshals? I remember that uh, Tommy Lee Jones movie where they were marshals. Do they just chase fugitives yeah. that go across state lines? I know the FBI chases fugitives across state lines. Are the marshals there to, to specifically go after, like, escaped convicts and stuff? Is that what marshals do? I'm not sure. Because that's what Tommy Lee Jones did in that movie, right? They were looking for a prisoner that had escaped. And then you see we the marshals. We have police officers in, like, and I'm not exactly sure what all of them do. Me neither. I mean, some, there's the, the U.S. Post Service has some guys who go around yeah. and arrest people. I'm yeah. like, I don't know exactly what the, that is. Uh, yeah, what is he called? He's the Postmaster General or something, yeah, right? right? Oh, and then he has people who work for him that will go arrest people. So I, I'm And like, then well. there's uh, that Apple TV document that just came out about that con artist. They're talking about the Social Security cop. Where he's like, I right. have as much authority as an FBI person. I go <laughs> right. after Social Security fraud. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. Good for you. I'm sure you're very smart and make good money. Uh, the, uh, the, the people that died at the... Well, the Americans that died at the Sandals Resort in the Bahamas. So mm-hmm. we now know that... There were four people that got sick. Three of them died. We already knew that. But they were all in the same little, uh, I don't know, condo. It was a a duplex from what it looks like. And the investigators in the Bahamas have been down there trying to, you know, figure out if there was something in that complex that made them sick, which obviously they suspect because you've got four people that were staying in that complex 
All of them got sick. Three out of the four died. And when they were down there, it looks like they've been checking the propane and the hot water heater to check for some sort of contaminant. But I'm just thinking, what would the contaminant be that made people that sick and to kill them that quickly? Well, the cause of the three American deaths at this popular resort in the Bahamas is still a mystery. This morning, forensics teams are focusing on this split beachfront villa at Sandals Emerald Bay in search of possible toxic contaminants. The forensic examination should be able to help us to determine uh, whether or not there was a chemical or whatever it was. And so, like I said, the propane tank, I know they were looking at, and the hot water heater, I know they were looking at. Lazo, you were, you might be old enough to remember the Legionnaires thing when yeah, they had Legionnaire no, disease coming but... from the air conditioners or whatever. It was like bacteria. But that took a while for people to get sick. And then, t- I mean, I say a while. It sounded like these people got very ill very suddenly, went to the doctor, came back, and then that woman, they said she woke up the next day and her limbs were all swollen. I mean, they died quickly. Right. I'm not smart. I certainly am not a doctor. I'm not a biologist. I don't know. But uh, what could possibly be in that hot water here? And maybe, I know we do have some smart listeners. If you have a an idea, because I've just been looking for, like, what do they suspect? And some all I can find is that, yeah, they're, they're checking the, the propane and the hot water here. So they must be looking for some sort of pathogen. But, man, what would kill you that quickly? It's like those uh, people that go swimming in, in swamps or, or dirty lakes, and they end up getting those brain-eating amoebas. But, again, that takes a little while. This seemed like it only took, like, a day or two before it killed these people. I did hear that the one who uh, survived is now in stable condition at the hospital. So it sounds like... Uh, I guess she's going to make it. The Queen of England. There's been a lot of health scares with the Queen this year. Yeah. And they've got this big jubilee coming up for the Queen. And uh, today, or I guess yesterday, whenever the hell it was, I think it's too hot in here. She didn't show up for the, the ceremonial opening of Parliament, which is the first time she's missed this in like 60 years, something like that. It's a very big deal. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that she's dead and they're trying to hide it. It doesn't even mean necessarily that she's so ill she can't leave the house. The royal family has a rule. Don't that, get talky. <laughs> he just took three in a row. The royal family. We you had a couple boom, shots. Boom, it's fine, yeah. but don't get talky. The royal family has a rule that she cannot be seen with her cane. She can't be seen with the walkers. She can't be okay. seen. With, and they say she needs a wheelchair right now, but apparently they see that as a sign of weakness. So she wasn't there. Of course, the rumors are now running. Is she actually dead? Are they going to lie about it and try and weakened at Bernie her until they can get through this jubilee? She already beat most of the records for longest Who reign. Who will be the next queen? Uh, the, who, who's in, we already figured this out. It's, it's King, right? I think we looked this up and the next one is the son because Charles said no, right? That's the, or the grandson. The next one is King William. William. Who's yes. the older son. The oldest Why would grandson. Why just bring him in? I don't know. They brought her son in. He was there. He's because got all he of his already military. abdicated. You're right. But he Charles. said he's not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. And why? Can she, I don't know how, how the monarchy works. Can she say I'm done now and retire? If he can abdicate, can't she abdicate after ruling for many years and say, I'm not well enough. I'd like some. Or do you have to die? I don't know how it now works. Now to a break from world tradition. For the first time since the 1960s, Queen Elizabeth did not attend the ceremonial opening of Parliament. Buckingham Palace said the Queen decided to skip the event after consulting with her doctors. Prince Charles uh, did step in to take his mother's place this morning. I saw that she had the longest. She's broken most of the records for longest running uh, monarchy or whatever. But if you look at who she's got left to beat, it's like I think Louis the Fourteenth who started when he was like four years old. So she didn't start when she was a child. You got to remember that. So if if you look at it in, in those types of numbers that she started as an adult, then she's already basically beat all the records. But hopefully she's okay. I don't wish any ill upon the queen. Sure. And uh, hopefully she'll be back. And, you know, there's a good chance that it's just because she needed this uh, wheelchair and she's not allowed to be seen with that for whatever reason. Ah. Andy Warhol. You know him? Well, of course I know him. Uh, very, very, I went to his uh, museum every Wednesday when I lived in Pittsburgh. They would serve you cosmopolitans for free in the lobby. I wonder, like, I don't understand the Warhol thing. I see it in movies and stuff, and I know he was this. Like, it's hard to imagine what a, it, would Banksy be a good, Banksy, Banksy? Would that be yeah, a good man, comparison? But to, he was but more involved private. in, like, music. Like, and Warhol was everywhere, and you knew culture, who he was. Yeah. yeah. Well, his Marilyn Monroe uh, screen print that we're all familiar with, the one that's been on a million T-shirts and there's a million prints of, the original uh, art just sold for $195 million, wow. and that is the most expensive uh, auction price for any American art piece, which I thought was a pretty big mind. A record-shattering auction overnight. Andy Warhol's famous 1964 <laughs> silk screen of Marilyn Monroe's face, titled Shot Sage Blue Marilyn, sold for $195 million to an unknown buyer at Christie's. It's the most ever paid for, for any work by an American artist at 
auction. When they remain hmm. anonymous, Lazo, is it because they don't want people knowing they have $195 million to spend on art, or is it because and they don't want to be interviewed about it? Yeah, I didn't know. Like, I assume if you're that rich, people know that you're that rich. All right, we're going to take a break real quick. Cool off for a second, and then yes. we'll come back and finish Doom Scrolling. The Church of Laszlo. All right, let's Doom Scroll part two, baby. All right. Well, there's been a lot of shortages in the last couple of years with COVID and then all these supply chain issues. And of course, uh, gas is expensive. I feel like we talk about that all the time. Sure. But of all the things, I don't have kids, let alone right. babies, but no formula sounds like a scary one. I mean, yeah. look, the shelves were completely empty at some point during 2020, whatever year that was when COVID hit. So, yeah, uh, I remember that, and that was scary. That didn't last too terribly long. But the idea that if you depend on formula for your baby and you're right. going to the, the store right now and you can't find it anywhere, the shelves are empty, you're trying to buy it online, turns out this is because of supply chain issues. And also, one of the biggest uh, uh, baby formula manufacturers in the country, in Michigan, the, the factory has been shut down I want to say since like February, there was, a, I think, a voluntary recall. The FDA was looking into some uh, problems that there could be some contamination. They say they're taking some, you know, precautionary steps to make sure that they, you know, get things uh, under control, but it's still not open. So right now, people who need formula are having a hard time finding it. Empty shelves. This is really scary. And worried parents. They are looking for baby formula and not finding it, at least not easily. I myself am down to one can of formula. At the end of April, nearly 40% of popular baby formulas were sold out across the U.S. The shortage is getting worse. Baby formula, like many things, has been affected by supply chain issues. Making it worse, the Abbott Nutrition Plant in Sturgis, Michigan, one of the largest in the country, has been shuttered for months. Abbott. Yeah, that's the one. Never heard of it until I saw this story. But I keep seeing people on social media saying, I can't find baby formula, can't find baby formula. I'm like, man, that's one of those things. Do we have a reserve for that? Because we have we reserves should. for a lot of things. You know, we keep all the seeds in case there's a nuclear uh, war and we need to start planting plants again. And we have oil reserves in case we run out of fuel. Do we have baby formula? We should do better. I was talking to Snowcone about this earlier off the air. Uh, and I've mentioned it before, and it's my fault, but there is one company, Water One, mm-hmm. where I can't get them to just take the money right out of my account. Oh, yeah. Right? This is when you have a hard time paying So bill. every four months, I get a yellow thing <laughs> stuck to my door. That says we're going to turn off your water. Yeah. Well, this morning was one of those days. Oh, it was. Okay. Happy water day. So I walked out. I look at it. It's like, we're going to turn off your water tomorrow. If you don't pay us $119. Yeah. And I think to myself, one, okay, I get it. I could pay it monthly. A lot of people do it. A lot of people uh, do things better than I do, right? Uh, They're more organized. They pay their bills on time. I thought $119, I have the money. I'm going to have to go home tonight, and they're going to charge me a $3 fee to pay it over the phone, right? Yep. But I also thought, are you really going to turn off my water at 95 degrees right? and make it so that I don't have drinking water in my house? Now, think about it. If most people are better than me, then the person who didn't pay the $119 really doesn't have the goddamn $119, right? right? Yeah. So you're going to turn off water at 95 degrees in what? An old lady's house? Yeah. Who really doesn't have the money? You're going to turn it off? It's insane. And during COVID, they there said should they be wouldn't. like, I get it. I understand. People think I'm a socialist and I'm so far to the left. And, you know, I think, you know, housing should be guaranteed. But I mean, we don't have to argue about that, right? Could we all at least agree if you don't think food and housing and education and all those things are guaranteed? Could we at least say water? We're going to go ahead and just make it a right. Make everybody have water. We can't agree on that. We're going to have water, and it's going to come to your house. And you you can get it, and it's free. And sure, you you know, your taxes may go up. I mean, $119 for four months, not very much for everybody, right? We could just blow up a few less brown places and, uh, and pay for everybody's water. That seems like we could do that. But we don't. Right. Like, I'm going to go home and pay it. It'll be fine. But it made me think, like... You would really come back to my house tomorrow when it's going to be 100 degrees 
and turn off my water. Yep. Without knowing me at all. Yep. Or the fact that you have kids or any of that. Or if I'm an old person by myself. Right. Exactly. You have no idea. You're just going to be like, you didn't pay the 119 Yep. Are you serious? I mean, they stopped we it during COVID. we got to do better. They said, we're, you know, certain cities said, we're not going to turn off power. We're not going to turn off water. You've got a grace period. We're going to give you this much time. And I thought, we, I think we talked about this then, but these people who say, well, if you start giving people water, then, you know, they're just going to start running paper mills out of their house. Okay, well, we can have a limit on how much you get for free, right? right? And then after that, you start how paying extra. How about you extra, get but... uh, $119 worth for four months? That'd be nice, because my <laughs> right? water bill... And where I live, and I've checked with all my neighbors, that's just what it costs where I live. It's over $100 a month. I don't water my lawn. I don't use a lot of water. And it costs, uh, like right now, it's about 100 bucks a month, but it can easily cost over 100 The cheapest it ever is is about 75 bucks a month. Okay. My mom lives 20 minutes away in a different city. It costs her, you know, 20 bucks a month. Well, it's I don't crazy water my lawn. It's crazy the disparity, like how, how big the difference is. My neighbors told but me there's 170 some, we, just, we just guarantee you water. Yeah. Yeah, up to a certain point, it's a, it's a, it's a I'd right. even go further, but at least we can use that. I would say, and we'll guarantee you, like, bread and right. cheese. Yeah, but can we start with water? That'd be good. <laughs> right. And not turn off people's like Like the minimum we give prisoners. Yes. How about we give that? Like, as what? You know, uh, three meals that aren't great and water. Water How about be good. that? Yeah, it's not going to happen. They're buying and selling water on the stock market now, right? So, Unbelievable. I don't know. Mario Batali, I don't know that much about yeah. celebrity chefs. I didn't watch a lot of Food Network. I know it's very, very popular. I get my celebrity chefs confused, but I usually recognize Mario Batali had a Me Too thing. That's what he's in the news for. He's on His trial right now. His dad had a sub shop by us. Oh, okay. In Seattle. Well, he's on I, you know, Best I, Italian I, sub I've ever had. I would get him mixed It might have been with, his uh, now, but yeah. Who's the, uh, who's the, is it? Is it Emerald? Is it Emerald the Bam? Who's yeah. that guy? Okay. Emerald. Mario think... Batelli's the big guy with the red hair and the red Crocs. Red hair, yes. I know now because I saw him in the news again. Uh, he's on trial right now for this, as you put it, a Me Too stuff, this sexual assault allegation, uh, which there have been apparently rumors of this or allegations of this throughout the years. Uh, this particular person says that she was uh, trying to get a selfie with him. He was intoxicated and he acted inappropriately, tried to kiss her. If, if he's found guilty, they were saying this morning, he could go to jail for this. This morning, former TV chef Mario Batali is on trial, facing possible prison time for indecent assault and battery. Mario Batali assaulted me that night, yes. The 32-year-old woman accusing Batali took the stand in Boston, describing an encounter at a restaurant in 2017, which she says left her shaken. She says she was taking selfies with Batali, who was visibly drunk when he began kissing and groping her. So there you go. Right. He's on trial for that. Uh, can't the, do uh, that. You can't do that. The uh, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial will be back next week, by the way. Right. So this week they're giving us the Mario Batali. They're like, hey, you guys uh, seem to really like this uh, celebrity trial stuff. How about Batali? You guys know him? Did you hear about this? And there, there's a lot of it. I was like, you know, this has been going on for a little while, Isn't but I really TV? feel like... I, well, they're certainly allowing cameras in the courtroom Do we because have they're any more showing, quotes they're showing from that? clips of it. Like, I what don't. What do you say if you're battalion to that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been watching it that closely. I just saw the uh, whatever that was, NBC or somebody covering it this morning. I I've seen the the headlines. All the network uh, outlets have been covering it. You know, Batali's in court today, and he could, uh, if he's found guilty, he could face prison time. Uh, Tom Brady. Yeah. We just talked about him earlier. Tom Brady. Uh, Obviously, big news that he's going to uh, go to Fox when he's done uh, playing football. But also, uh, he was on Twitter. It looks like it's one of these TikTok things where you know you answer questions, whatever. I don't have a TikTok like the kids, so I'm, I'm not right. uh, hip to it. But people were really excited about this because they were asking Tom Brady to, uh, I think it was like, tell a secret. Did you see this? No. New trend alert. Tell me something honest. The tuck rule game against the Raiders. Oh, I saw this game. Might have been a fumble. He says yeah. the, tuck rule game, the tuck rule game, uh, or call, I guess, might have been a fumble. I watched that documentary. Documentary on tuck rule with him and Charles he, Woodson. I thought he really stood by the tuck rule thing. Maybe that's what they told him to do. Right. But it's it's not like he was saying, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe that was. At the time, and, and they were having fun, it seemed, or at least he right. was having more fun. He I was think. having more fun. Charles Woodson was like, that's a fumble. Was, was like, yeah, he was I like, I can't I believe know. you're telling me this still <laughs> mm-hmm. to this day after all your success. Like, that, that, that wasn't a ridiculous right. call. If nothing else, though, what that documentary showed me was I, I think back then I did probably think there's got to be some sort of conspiracy to help Tom Brady out. Like, why would they call? But after watching that documentary, I realized, you know what? When that happened in his career and everything, I think the refs were really like, 
Is that possibly a tuck rule? And we'd seen that there had been a couple times when it had come up The documentary previously. is interesting. So the documentary right. is interesting. It wasn't the first time. I mean, right. that's the one we remember, but it's not the first time they right. debated that. Exactly. And that's what I, so I did learn something from that. Plus, it's just cool to see Tom Brady's house. I mean, good Lord. That place oh, is. When they come in off the ocean and, and they go Tampa. up and they're playing pool and they're yeah. talking at his pool tables like, Sweet Jesus. <laughs> and they say he makes less money than his wife still. Like, he yeah. never made as much money as her. Unbelievable. And finally, you know, I've thought of a lot of scary things. I've seen news stories, headlines, where I've gone, God, that would be horrifying. And sometimes it sticks with me, like the woman who, you know, woke up in the middle of the night and someone's rubbing her feet. Oh, yeah, Might be the, the most terrifying thought ever. But then I saw this, and I've never heard of a story like this before. And I thought, that would be really scary. And what do you do in that moment? This couple, they've got three dogs, Okay. They're in bed. Uh, this is outside Atlanta. They wake up, and there is a dog in their bed that is not their dog. And it is a full-size dog. It looks like uh, you know, it's some sort of a terrier. I, I'm not going to say that it's a pit, but it's some sort of a terrier. Probably a good 60, 65-pound dog, something like that. And it is cuddled up asleep next to the wife. And the husband sees it, and he's like, hey, hey. <laughs> That's not our dog. Because she just thinks, well, we've got dogs. Sure. Also, she says in the story, you know, our dogs will bark at anything. Some reason they didn't bark at this strange dog that just climbed into bed with and us. And I said, "Hey, Julie, whose dog is this?" Jimmy Johnson opened his eyes and didn't recognize the dog sleeping in their bed. Stayed rolled over on my side of the bed, and he goes, "No, no, no, it's not our dog." A strange canine quietly coming into their house uninvited. One, how did the dog get in my house? Uh, two, we have three dogs, and they bark at anything: a squirrel in the yard, a rabbit, a bird. They bark, and there was no noise. She says, uh, yeah, so you heard. She says, I roll over inside of the bed. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not our dog. They figure out that the dog is friendly. It doesn't seem to act aggressive. So they take some pictures of it, post it on social media. And uh, through social media, they got the uh, family's attention that actually owned her and got her sent back to where she belonged. But imagine waking up. It's it's like one of those dumb comedies, you know, where they wake like a plane sure. automobiles where he's got his, his arm around him or whatever. You wake up and... Well, and they still don't know how the dog got in? They think that they must have left the back door open. That's, that's okay. what they think, is that they must have left the back door open. And for whatever reason, their three big dogs did not bark at this dog. And so they wake up and this dog... I mean, it's, it's perfectly cuddled up with this woman. And she probably just in her sleep thought it was sure. one of their dogs. But if you wake up and just open your eyes... And there's a 60, 65 I would freak pounds. out. I would lose it. But you also Especially because I only don't have a cat. Wanna, I don't want to act startled, right? You would especially freak out. Yeah, I don't know like, what, what I would do. Like, you I would think you were there. I would be like, God damn it. Sometimes Someone is dog me a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I owe you a dog. <laughs> it's Yo. Yo. All right. Let's talk about it. All right. Should so, you buy your kid a car or not? Yeah. Specifically, uh, should you buy them a nice car? So a uh, person that, uh, it, it doesn't matter, friend on Facebook. They, they're, they've got a daughter. Uh, she's their oldest kid. She's about to turn 16. Sure. And uh, they bought her, well, he bought her a car, okay? Dad bought her a car. He's very proud of this car. He posts, you know, hey, got her a car today, and, uh, you know, congratulations, something along those lines. Right. Immediately, the pushback begins. Why would you buy her such a nice car? She's 15 years old. She doesn't need this car. Oh, she's just going to be driving to school and back. Oh, this is going to make it harder for her at school because everyone's going to think she's the rich royal oh, brat. How can oh. you afford to do this? Which is, talk about, I mean, none of this was any of your business. But once you right. get to that p- portion, like, are you really right. doing that well? It is uh, a very nice car. I think it's a couple years old. A Mercedes? Maybe, yeah. Maybe like three years old. C-Class? Uh, E-Class. E-Class. Yeah, it's pretty nice. nice. Pretty nice. It might be two years old. It looks. It's very nice. Look, it is much nicer than the car that I had when I was 16. And my my, I will admit that when I first saw it, I'd be lying if I didn't say that, or admit rather that I thought, why why does she need that? But then as I started seeing the pushback, I was like, let her have it. Give her the car. Give her 10 of them. I hate people so much. Like, why are you giving? First of all, she's 15. You think she's going to turn down a nice Mercedes? And also, I thought someone brought up a really good point that there's many good points because there are people who are like, it's none of your business. Right. Like, he's not here looking for critiques or criticisms, but maybe that's like his love language. You know, different people have different love languages. Maybe one of the ways that he shows her love is like getting her something nice, you know, and that that's not terrible if the parent wants to get their kid something nice if they can afford it. Like, when did that become such a bad thing? So I, I was a little torn at first. I think I'm mostly just feeling angry at the pushback, the people who publicly do that. If I saw it and no, there had been no comments and, you know, my girlfriend said, well, that seems dumb. Why does she need that? I might have been like, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? And not thought much more of it. But seeing all this and the people who all right, say... All right, so first off, he posted it. He posted so it. So when you post it, 
You put yourself open for criticism. Of course. You could have just not posted it on Facebook. That's a thing. It's it You can do thing. that. Hard it's to open believe. there. Hard to believe. That said, what were the other people? What was the pushback? The pushback. Like, she doesn't need a car. It's a waste of money. She's you're well, spoiling what are they her. Their kids? You're spoiling her. Didn't say. I didn't see one example of like. I saw a lot of like. You know, I didn't drive a car like that. Or the people. I did see one person who said, uh, "The people. Anyone who drove a car like that in my school would have gotten a lot of crap for being the spoiled brat." I'm like, well, okay, she obviously well, doesn't go to your school, right? And obviously, you're in your fifties now, so you maybe know, I don't know. Maybe changed. things have changed a little bit. And yes, there were kids at my school who had really nice cars, and there were kids who had crappy cars. I remember them actually sometimes being able to be friends. I had friends who had really nice cars. I had friends who had really crappy cars. Most of the time, it boiled down to someone's parents doing a lot better than the other person's parents or whether or not their parents wanted to help them buy a car. Some parents said, you got to buy your own car. And some parents said, no, we'll help you get a car. I never thought more or less about someone and their car when I was 16. I never thought like, oh, I mean, I, I remember kids having like, you know, Jeeps and right. And yeah, like, oh, BMWs that's cool. And, and like that fits your personality. Right. But I never thought like, oh, God, You're, like and here's the thing. Like I say about it all the time. You are going to have if your dad or mom bought you a used escort with one hundred and seventy thousand miles on it. You are going to have to prove to me more than just a, a sample survey of one, but even with your sample, sample survey of one, you are going to have to prove to me your success rate because right. of that. I'm going to need to go to your Facebook page and see how accomplished you became because your dad didn't buy you a Mercedes. Exactly. I do not believe that you are going to be able to show me that your success rate is higher right? because you learned the value of a dollar because you drove, drove a piece of crap, a pacer. Right. I don't I, believe I it. I do not completely. believe it. And you're you're not even going to be able to give me that anecdotal evidence, let alone show me some sort of study right. that shows well, we that have parents hundreds of thousands their, of people you right. can. Yeah, show me a study that shows that kids who drove crappy cars when they were 16, like you said, understand the value of a dollar better than those who are given a nice car. And let me ask you something else. If the mom and dad work, right, I'm just guessing, yeah. I, I, and I'm not friends with these people, you are. I'm guessing they work. And, he owns a business. Okay, and they you know worked hard and gotten to where they are, and they have money, at least enough to buy their 16 year old girl a very nice car, and it's not going to harm them financially. Right. It's a big purchase for them, but something he clearly wanted to do. I don't think it was like super easy, but something that he wanted to do. He well, wanted to spoil her. What do you care? Exactly. He's not looking. It's his money. He's not going to be calling, asking it's to borrow his money. money. If that's what you're worried about. Exactly. It's his money, and, and he wants to spend it on his kids. Right. And she is a child, and she can see this. So now you're basically saying all is lost for her. Oh, now she's got to fight this uphill battle because she's a spoiled brat. You don't even know her. Right. I know her. She's a great, great <laughs> kid. I've never known her to be anything but a great kid. Right. I've never known them to have any problems with her. She's Straight not students. going to be a bad kid because she got a nice car. Right. And I can give you some anecdotal evidence because my brothers and I, we drove pieces of junk. I remember uh, my, my, my youngest brother, he drove a pickup truck that he bought from a guy down the street. It didn't run. So my dad said, you got to get a car that runs. you got to move that car from in front of our house because they're, 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 uh, the HOA is getting mad at us. Right. They said, you have to get rid of it or we will for you. So my dad said, I'll take you down to the, the impound lot or like the, you know, where they destroy the cars. Mm-hmm. He worked at like a junkyard. Sometimes we get cars that run that they're just going to junk. They found a car. It was $100. He's like, do you have $100? My brother said yes. He was so mad about that car the whole time he drove it because it just kept running. I think he was hoping that it would give up. Right. But it just ran and ran and ran. Now, look, I think it's great that he found a car for $100. Now, my dad but it did didn't make it him a better way. person. My dad did it this way. My dad did Oh, look, even with my sister, you guys are about to drive. Guess who is going to get a new Lincoln? <laughs> right. It's me. Right. But you get the old car. Yeah. So, like, I know she had, like, you know, uh, I don't know, a Buick Century or something. And he was like, I've been looking to upgrade anyway. Right. So then he got himself a new car and gave her his old car. Yep. And then when I turned 16, he was like, look at that. I am going to go buy a new car 
and you get the Grand Am. Yep. And I was like, fair enough. Like, it was fine. Exactly. Like, and that's fine. But if, if he would have said, like, oh, my life would not have changed one way or the other if he would have said, I'm going to buy you a Volvo. Right. It wouldn't have. Doesn't like, matter. it literally wouldn't have. I mean, you also talk about how with your sister there was a lot of the, because uh, she's older. Well, I didn't get to do that when I was mm-hmm. a kid. I didn't get that, which I definitely grew up right. around that with my brothers. Like, wait, what? He gets to do what? And so when I turned 16, I bought a car when I was 14. It was a Volkswagen that I bought for $200. And when I turned, my brother helped me work on it. It was like a thing that we bonded over, right? And I would go stay at his house and we work on the car. And when I was 16, the whole point was, you've got a car. You've had it since you were 14. My dad decided at the last minute. I mean, I was literally 16. He's like, oh. I don't really want you driving that car because he just thought it was dangerous. He's like, everyone right. drives big cars now. And because he was taking that away from me, he offered to loan me money. Like, I'll give you this much money and loan you some more sure. to get something different, which my other brothers did not get that. I'll give you that. They did not right. get that. Sure. And, and boy, there was a lot of must be nice, you know, to be, which it was, by the way, when he said, I'm going to take this car. Like, I don't want to spend all the time working on the, like, exactly. I learned all these lessons. From the right. other children right. who had cars that were broken down in my driveway constantly. Well, I'll tell you who has a reason to be mad is my oldest. Not, not That's mad, what I was going to ask you. Is, what's he going to do? Well, uh, my mother has said that when both boys turn 16, she'll give them their car. Oh, okay. So perfect. whatever she has and whatever she's driving, she'll just give to them and then upgrade. Basically what my dad did, right? Okay. So I got your guys' first cars. It's not, they're on me. Nice. Uh, but she, her, the car that she last bought was a BMW 7 Series. Jesus. So I was like, yo, yo you're going to <laughs> drive, drive a black 7 Series at 16. But then she, that was in uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. But then she moved to Michigan, and she was like, I can't get around the snow in this thing. So she bought a Jeep. So he gets a Jeep. She turned it in and gets a Jeep. But I was like, man. Uh, if only he'd never so known about the BMW. You were so close to series. <laughs> right. So it, not, and the Jeep's beautiful. Great. It's It'll nice. Awesome. It is. Of course. It's great. Yeah. It'd be awesome. But he's right. going to know that there was a 7 Series. <laughs> and maybe and he not. doesn't pay attention, so he doesn't know. Right. Like no. He doesn't know what a 7 Series is. He's just not a car kid. Right. Maybe when he turns 16 and gets his license and starts driving, he might someday realize. I don't think he'll even notice it. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he might not and some kids he's just are not like that, that kid some kids are like that i don't think that this girl was asking for a merc i don't think that this was like she's right. a big car person this is what she wanted i think he wanted to spoil her and i think he has every right to do that if he wants to and i also just i'm with you i don't think there's any evidence that buying a kid a nice car is going to damage them in some way or it's going to put them at some sort of deficit right. i just don't me neither we had kids at school who had nice cars my thought was their parents make good money that's what i thought their parents probably make more money or than sometimes person. I didn't even think about it. Sometimes a kid would drive up in a new Mustang or whatever, and I would think, I wouldn't even think about it. Like, it, honestly, it crosses your mind so little. Like, well, maybe his mom doesn't work. He's driving his mom's car. I don't know. True. That's true. Like, I never even thought about it. Like, I, you know, there was a buddy of mine who drove a Mercedes, but it was his mom's. Right. She didn't go to work, so he drove it around all day. Well, I never thought about it one way or the other. I just don't get how you as parents, I, 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 I'm angry and I don't even have kids. And this does, so it certainly doesn't involve my kids. They don't exist. If right. someone came to me and said, why would you buy your kid? Whatever it is, a car, a PlayStation. I just think I would get so angry. I mean, has anyone done that to you? No. You've not had people like on social media or anything, like listeners who say, why would you do that, Lazo? I can't believe you do that. The one time I did the Easter egg hunt, I put $100 bills in the eggs. Oh, that's right. Yes. I put like, so I did an Easter egg hunt, and I put $100 bills in the plastic eggs, and I hit them around the house. So like one of my kids had like 1300 bucks, and the other one had like 900 bucks, And people were like, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. And then I just had to explain to them, my kids don't have. they don't have anywhere to put it so what what they they don't even understand what it is right and so well they do like they 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 understand like oh man it's great i could buy all this stuff i have seven hundred dollars and then they give me the money back (laughs) right and i put it in my wallet and they say do i still have that seven hundred dollars like sure you do buddy Mm -hmm. and then they buy stuff right but i was gonna buy it for them anyways i gave them money that i had yep what are you doing? And I'll Come hold on. it for you. Right, exactly. right, I'll hold it for you. Exactly. Don't worry about it. I got in the back part of my wallet there, and I just go back and put it back in the bank. Like, the, relax. The kid who's... They got to teach them 25 cents for an egg. Right. And the kid <laughs> at school, if they want to get angry, like, I can't believe she's got that Mercedes. 
okay, I guess, you know, kids can do that. They're mean, whatever that, that sort of stuff happens in school. You are now in your thirties, forties, fifties, and you are still picking on a kid in high school, right? whether you realize it or not. Now, the only thing that I did realize later after a couple years of having a kid and nobody accused me of this, but it is something that I saw on social media. And I was like, okay, you make sense. My kids get one present, both from Santa. Mm-hmm. Everything else from me. Do you want to get the credit for it? No, that way they don't go to school and say, Santa got me oh, this, Santa yeah, got me that, that Santa sense. got me this. Santa. And I, I saw someone say that, like, hey, buy your kids whatever you want. Like, you got money, congratulations, I but I don't. That. And when my when your kid goes to school and says Santa bought me seventeen pairs of Air Jordans, a PlayStation Five, like right. my kid's like Santa hates us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I never thought. Of and that. I'm like, no, no, no. All right, so Santa buys you one thing. He bought you this. He bought you a pair of Air Jordans. Everything else from me. Fair enough. So I, I make sure that I do that. So that they go to school, they can be like, "What'd you get for Christmas?" Santa got me this. M- my Mama dad got me well. the rest yes. of stuff. Yep. The Church of Laszlo. Yo. Yo. It's been Pepe. <laughs> Pretty good memory there. Yeah, <laughs> Cacho e Pepe. Okay. Uh, so this this girl, she uh, she has a TikTok uh, channel. She also has a YouTube channel. I went okay. to her YouTube channel, and it's all food. She's one of these people. She goes oh, she's uh, like a cook. Uh, no, she like goes to Chipotle and she says, "Now I'm going to eat Chipotle." And now I'm going to go to Taco Bell. I'm going to eat Taco Bell. Now I'm going to eat what, she all the it? snacks. Yeah, I guess. I didn't spend too much time watching too much, but I watched as much of it as I could. I went through her very first video on YouTube. She said, it's from a couple years ago. This is my first video, and today I'm going to eat Chipotle with chips. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not here to criticize. You've been getting enough criticism the last Mm -hmm. few weeks. Uh, I looked through all of her videos. It looks like she has teamed up with some other people that eat food online, and that's what they do. This particular video... Apparently, she was talking about some uh, sauce from Trader Joe's. She she well, cooked like a, a meal. Sauce. Yeah, she cooked a meal using Trader Joe's ingredients, it looks like. And this sauce is from Trader Joe's. Was it like a called, marinara sauce or something? It looks like it's kind of green in the video. I didn't really look too far into it. It's called Cacio a Pepe. Cacio and she, a Pepe? And she, she definitely enunciates. And she's Italian, Pepe. by the way. She's Italian-American. Yeah, I mean, you can listen to her say it. This is how she said it. Everyone must try this Cacio a Pepe. One, the sauce I hear it. Pepe. 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 Several people right. have. Uh, it's fairly annoying. Had piggybacked used off to this. Do that. Several people piggybacked off this and, and so made fast some. used to do it when he was doing the culture thing with his wife. His wife used to want to go to like the symphony and uh, the ballet, and then he would come in and he'd have like dress pants on and a sweater. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going to the symphony tonight. I'm like, why? And he's like, oh, sorry, I'm cultured. And then sometimes, I mean, he actually said to me one time, and I was like, dude, you hand fish. Well, uh, like, quit being something you're not. And I remember one time we talked about something, and you, you said Henri. And I said, what did you say? And you said Henri. No, you and didn't. He did. I don't even know what that yes. means, but I'm sure I said it. It was Henry. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and he, you're, like, you're like Henri. And I was like, Henri. And you're like, well, you know. My wife studied French, and, you know, it's Henri something. I was like, yeah, but you're American. It's Henry. And call him Hank. You don't have to do the French uh, dialect for me. I understand. Just be like Henry whatever. Well, this so girl, I get it. Like, this is slightly annoying like that. Right, but, okay. Gotcha, th- that, that, that's as far as you took it. These people have taken it way further. Way, now, way, so, way. so, like, this guy made a funny video, and he got hundreds of thousands of views. So he puts the clip of her, right, and it looks like, you can see it's spinach. Maybe it's a white sauce. I don't know. Everyone must try this. Cacho e pepe. Okay, so he, he, he keeps, he laughs. He's drinking himself. milk? I'm drinking a milk cake, eh? And then he says, uh... <laughs> I'm eating a biscuit. He does the whole thing. Okay, Eventually, he says like I'm taking a crap. Eh, oh, or that's something. funny. That's funny, right? I was fine with that. That might have been actually the first time that I even saw this. Cut okay, I like that guy's thing. It's yeah, funny. Yeah, you that's, can do that. that's fine. And and it, she's putting herself on YouTube. Then she's. I'm sure she's. Got to be okay with that, right? Yeah, and she's, you know, once you put something like that out there, you're open it's for gonna it. Live. Yeah, you're open it's for gonna it. Live. And she is a, an Italian-American, so mm-hmm. I assume that she knows how to pronounce it. She says that she may have overpronunciated a little bit, but I see this last night because this apparently is still going on that people are talking about this girl. Her name's Gabby, and BuzzFeed wrote an entire article about her, and it says TikTok's Cacio Pepe woman cannot catch a break. Now the st- I start I just couldn't help but see like okay I saw this girl I know the Cacio Pepe I'm hip I know what they were talking about here I saw that video 
But then I start reading what people said. First of all, Doja Cat, I guess, tweeted about this. Other celebrities. What a Doja Cat. I don't know. I didn't take time to click the uh, hyperlink. People should make fun of me because I thought Doja Cat was cryptocurrency. There you go. Until a month ago. (laughs) Well, there you go. People were always talking about Doja Cat. I'm like, man, I'll buy some. How much is Doja Cat? Yeah. I bought Doja Coin. I don't know. I bought some sort of coin with a dog on it. I hadn't thought None of that's paid off. I I I literally thought Doja Cat was cryptocurrency. <laughs> I was like, well, if Matt Damon's in the crypto, I'll buy it. How do I do it? Huh? No, she's a singer. Crypto.com? All right. Doja I, Cat. I don't know Put in Doja said. Cat. It wasn't available. Some of these other celebrities, I don't even know. Some of these other pop stars. We need Julia. But uh, anyway, a lot of people got uh, you know involved with this and, and kind of poking fun at her. I, like I said, I'm totally fine with the guy drinking the milk cake. Okay? That's funny, right? <laughs> yes. But then you see what other people have been saying to this poor girl. Now, I will say she's had a pretty good attitude, at least in this interview. She did say that after everything that's happened, her quote here, uh, I think this social media presence has made me honestly not like the Internet. Well, yeah, you okay. know, I, I get that. So people have now started sending her death threats. What? Oh, yeah. They're calling oh, her. You got to stop. They're calling her a young boy. They're Wasn't calling her an old man. Wasn't joking around and being funny? She said that no one no no one feels comfortable trying to pronounce that word. And I mean, as an what do Italian you guys American, think? Don't you think she was kind of like she said she over enunciated a little bit, but she said that she was trying to pronounce it for people so they would know because on the bottle it's just Italian. No one knows how to say that, so she was pronouncing it so that you would know this is how it's pronounced. And she probably did overdo it a tiny I bit. She was joking. I don't think she was joking. I think she okay, was trying to. I think wrong. she was trying to help you understand. You know, according to the way that she. Did this interview at least? It sounds like she knew that this was a popular sauce, which I don't shop at Trader Joe's that often, so I wasn't familiar with it. But people are scared to try and pronounce it, so she was trying to help. Now she does get recognized. I mean, we're talking the original video, just the one, has like 50 million views. That doesn't okay. include all these other parodies of it and the repost and everything else. She is now getting recognized in public. People are asking for autographs. Okay, people well, are that's asking good. for pictures with her. Good so for that's her. Good. I mean, look, I, I, uh, I don't know what her original intention was to do TikTok and YouTube videos, but I'm guessing it's to be recognized. Yeah. Or else you wouldn't make them. So the idea that people are asking for autographs, that's something, right? She says that she's her, getting there. Her Italian American background means that she has a bit of an exaggerated accent, okay? That that's what she says. It's a, the exaggerated accent is part of my gra- back, background. But she said the, the casual teasing, uh, especially from actual Italians, she says here, told her that she was saying it incorrectly. She's fine with that. But then you start getting the people who say, you look like a 35-year-old woman, which, look, I'll be honest. If she said she's 17 or 35, I couldn't tell. But right. she did respond to, yo, 35 is young anyway. I think she's <laughs> actually 26 years old. Um, people are calling her a little boy. People are calling her an ugly man, an ugly old man. Jesus. D- actual death threats that people have been sending her direct messages and saying, saying that they're you? going to kill her. Yes, that they want to kill her, that they are going to kill her. What is wrong what with is people? What is wrong with people? And- <laughs> like a simple... Yeah, God, this yeah. is stupid. I'm drinking a milk cake. Right. Hey, that's funny. If you right. if you've got an idea or you want to say good and lord. And even a comment on this, like even a comment like this, I hate I everything will. about this. <laughs> sure, sure. Everything about this I hate and despise you. Even if you say that, I think you may be taking it a little too far, but you're fine. But the whole like hey, you ugly bitch, I'll kill you. Like, what? Yeah. What? It's you could be like, I despise you and your channel. Well, she made the channel, so okay. And I hate the way you say it, and I'm never going to... Uh, all of that stuff is in line. Let me just read you the, one of these. I'll kill you, and you'll look like a man. Let me read you that, one. That, to me, feels like maybe we've... You, you're, you, you, young man, because I assume it's young men doing this. Of course. You, young man, have some misdirected anger. Yes. Uh, so she says, they say here, despite her overwhelmingly positive outlook on her new fame, she acknowledged that her perception of the Internet has changed drastically since she became a meme. She said, I like it for the people that support me, but it's desensitized me to all the bullying. Now, this is one of the, the things that got sent here. You ready? This one person says, I'd like to strangle you until you can't talk or scream mm. anymore. Mm-hmm. I'd like to strangle you until you can't talk or scream anymore. Like, can you get in trouble for that? Is that... I know I've watched a lot of true crime. I'm like, yeah, well, they haven't done anything yet. They could just be joking. It was just, just a threat. I'm like, just a threat. That's a serious threat. If you message someone and say, I, I guess. Didn't say I'm going to. I didn't say I'm going to. It says I'd I like want to. to. I, ah, still. You know what? I I'd be into choking you to death, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and that's also kind of funny. Like, so, But I don't like the way the guy <laughs> phrased that. It seemed 
more of a threat than it did a one-off funny comment. She does have really short hair. She thinks that's part of the problem. She says, part of the uh, problem. Yeah, she says she short her, hair. her appearance is not stereotypically feminine. Oh she says, I honestly think people are very perturbed by the short hair girls, or sorry, perturbed by the short hair girls, uh, but she doesn't mind. Again, she does have a good outlook here. She says she doesn't mind a little uh, jab, you know, here and there, saying that, uh, you know, boys can call, or people can say she looks like a little boy, and most of the time she'll find that funny. She does seem to be overwhelmingly positive, considering people are calling her ugly old man, little boy, and saying that they want to strangle the life out of her. With over 100 million likes on the video, she's now planning on stopping her video. Oh, sorry, not planning on stopping her videos anytime too soon. I got scared, like, you're not going to quit, are you? I just went through and watched your videos. I would quit in a minute. I would too, but she's already made it through all of this. Like, no, you got to, I, I guess you, you're, you're in some way, somehow you have turned the Cachua Pepe, which is a thing I saw later night and thought, who is that? That seems, you know... Kind of annoying, no, here's right? the thing. But now you can be inspirational. You're like, I'm going to keep making these videos. I don't care. I eat Chipotle. I eat Trader Joe's. People watch me, which the whole thing to me is mysterious to begin with. But then you made that video. I would have thought for sure, boy, I don't think I could probably have a whole lot of good things to say about this person based on this. But now she's done this interview, and I feel bad for her that people are making fun of her. You know, the way that they are, that they're threatening her. And I don't want her to quit over it. I don't want anyone to be bullied into stopping <laughs> you know, doing what they want so... to do. Interesting in that I think for a long time, people obviously did not have the ability to put their own thoughts and uh, ideas and body and image and all those things out there for people to critique. This is not what she's going through is not something that I haven't gone through. Right. And it would bother you. I mean, I went through it before I even met you. And then when I met you, you were like, what do we do about this? And I'm right. like, nothing. And you're like, why? And I'm like, because they're paying attention. Right. And we're out there. We're putting it out there. And they get to say what they want to say. And let's get like it is a battle. Yeah. You put on, put on your, I hate to say it, and I know it sounds like, put on your big boy pants and get ready because people are going to say they hate you and they hate your mother and they hate your wife and you're ugly and you're stupid and you suck. But it was, I always knew in my head it was because of this job that I was going to start doing this and therefore people were going to hate me and I have seen that hatred in those levels for years. Yeah. It's not anything new. People have been wishing for my death forever. But I think people who lived in this world where maybe even they even participated in it to some point, right? Yeah. Like, I hope Tom Cruise falls off a building, whatever, all that stuff, right? Now they put out their own thing, and all of the sudden, the people click onto the one thing they did. Yep. And then they're shocked that people can be this evil and miserable. Look at all these comments. This is from the story about her, the interview. All of these comments. But none saying, of this really oh, shocks I, you because of what we do, does it? No, no, no. But I'm saying even, as soon as you remind people on the internet, that this is a human being and that she sees these messages. Right. Suddenly you get this BuzzFeed story about her and BuzzFeed News. All of these comments on here, people saying, you know, oh, we need to put dogs in charge. Humans can't be trusted. This is too vile. Right. I can't. But all these people at some point have probably said something terrible of on course. the internet. But once they're reminded, no, she's a human being and she sees this stuff, they feel bad for her, which is why I don't want her to quit making her videos. And I, there is happy uh, ending here, Lazo, because you talk about at least her paying attention. I went back and looked at her videos, and I saw that it looked like she was getting anywhere from, you know, hundreds to a couple thousand, few thousand views. Now a lot of them have, you know, 10,000, 20,000 views, right. something like that. They said because of this video, she's now making 5,500 bucks a month. Well, there you go. So there you go. People are paying attention. Right. I guess there's no such thing as bad attention. As I just wish I could take it. everybody who creates things. And I know there's tons of people on the internet who are creating things that are better than me and better than what I create. But I wish I could take them to like a boot camp and be like, they're going to hate you. Yep. They're going to say they want to kill your children. 
and they want to eat your mouth. Like the things that you are about to see from people. Don't read the is going to be horrible. I actually say you say don't read them. I say read them and understand that you are making people feel. You're making people feel. Whatever you did there drew attention, right? Yeah. So do more of that. Right. And if you can pull it off like you do, then read look them. look at one of your videos that got 700 views and do less of that. <laughs> yeah. Look at the video that got 22 million views and do more of that. Yeah. Right? More cacio e pepe, less chipotle. Everyone mm-hmm. must try this cacio e pepe. I do hate the way you said it. Me oh, too. Oh, my God. Wow. What a bitch. The Church Shop Laszlo. Yo. Yo. Are we done? We're done. Thank God. Thank God, eh? <laughs> my God. I know. I, look, I'm not complaining. I have the greatest job in the world, but Jesus Christ, it's hot in here today. Hey, everyone who works outside, Godspeed, stay safe, drink some yeah. water. I mean, we're working inside, hydrate. and we can't. And maybe the best beer, idea right? isn't six Red Bulls yeah. and a <laughs> pint of Mad Dog, but <laughs> that's what I did to try to stay cool. And at this point, I think my body's like, we're done. Hey, at least so. you're dizzy. You know, you don't feel it <laughs> quite as much as you did when we started the day. I do feel like my body's like, yo, the Mad Dog. The, but the rage level. Thought, <laughs> The people walking by who they just started experiencing, like, is it hot where you are? I'm like, I will come across here. Oh, and I will strangle it's you. been hot the whole it's like, been hot for 20 me, years. It's been hot for four years in this studio. Well, We've been trying to tell you. I don't want to hear about it. Oh, oh my oh, God. Yeah. And then one of our coworkers sent out an email that said, Is there any way that we could get the thermostat to not be either super hot or Arctic cold? I'm like, Where are you getting Arctic no, cold? Arctic cold. Give us Arctic cold. I would take that. Give me Arctic cold, Please. you douchebag. Yeah, brag Make about it. It's seven Ooh, degrees in here. I'll wear a sweatshirt. It's too chilly. I'm cold. I need long sleeves. I will kill you. And then, as Ah. many, like, just send an email out to everybody, like the whole company. Yeah. Thanks. I've just been sitting up here bitching to people who listen to the show <laughs> right. for years. For, for four years now. Not people. to people who actually oh. work here. It's none of their business. They're it complaining is. about the temperature. I'm sure again. they hate it here, too. I don't need to double down on that. Oh. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're going to get out of here. Uh, it was good seeing you guys. Tomorrow, I'll be sure and uh, reload that little portable air conditioner. I'm sure that'll make everything better. And, you know, I'll, they'll have the air conditioner fixed by tomorrow, I'm sure. There was an email that said. The air conditioner will be at 50%. It won't get any better. It needs Tommy John surgery. <laughs> They're what? making a baseball That's joke. True. That's no. true. That yeah. said Don't that. make jokes. That's what he I said. I will kill you. <laughs> Who Tommy made John. a joke? Was it a boss or an engineer? An engineer. It needs Tommy oh. John surgery. Oh. It was the one we liked. Too. <laughs> oh. You know, uh, and then I thought about this, too. There is, like, where the servers are, right? You can go in there, and it's, like, 60 degrees. It's super cold. And they will tell you, oh, well, the servers need to be cold or else they won't work. And I want to say, <laughs> I know. How, why does that work? What about if I told you I wouldn't work? <laughs> I know. Like, I don't work. Like, if you don't get it under control, I don't know whose job it is, but what if the humans quit before the server? Because what you're telling us, and while you may be 100% correct, the servers are more important than the humans. They're like, look, if you quit, we'll just play music, which actually we've seen your text line and a lot of people would prefer. So, uh, but if the servers quit, we can't play music. It'll just be what you guys talking the whole time. And again, we've seen your text line. <laughs> yeah. Not advantageous. So why don't you guys just sit there in the heat and suck it up? And you're like, all right, good show, Mark. Stay positive, kids. <laughs>